Hi, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa. And in today's video, we are going to just do another little chatty sit down in the midst of Vlogmas as I like to go through the chalk and notch patterns shea dress. I just finished it up, um, really enjoyed making this. And so I thought I'd pop on and make a video like I normally do every week with my coffee and cahoots. We'll talk about the size ranges. We'll talk about the dress variations that you can choose from. I will talk about any idiosyncrasies or any takeaways with the actual pattern instructions. Then I'll go into my size fabric I used and any modifications I had to make for my dress as well as my measurements for context. So um, as for, actually let's just jump into it. Um, here is the, the dress here. This is the Shea dress. This is the variation, the button front variation with the lantern sleeves. I think this is just such a beautiful kind of boho folksy dress. Kind of gives me Christy Dawn Doan vibes also kind of gives me that Hungarian folksy dress style. I, I don't know. I just, I just love, love, love this silhouette. I had been eyeing this for so long. I don't know why it took me so long to buy this. It is an intermediate pattern. I would agree with that, but I would say the instructions were actually pretty easy to follow for an intermediate pattern compared to something like um, the Friday pattern company instructions that I just didn't really love. The size range is zero through 30, but what's interesting about this um, patty man pattern manufacturer is they have bust cut variations as well. It only ranges from variation of A through D. I'm gonna show you this chart while I'm talking. So of course, you know, it's not as inclusive as it could be. If you are a little more bustier, you will have to make those necessary modifications. Um, but at least it's a start in the right direction, which I do appreciate. And I wanted to show you the chart so you could kind of see the bust ranges. I'll just do high bust ranges. It ranges from 30, inches to 54 inches or 76 centimeters to 137 centimeters and then the full bust there's so many different options because it's a through d so i really appreciated the fact that at least it's more customized and so your garment is naturally already going to start out being a little more tailored um here are the different silhouettes so you have either a zip back closure or a button front closure. And then you have what's called the tank variation, or you have what are the lantern sleeves as a variation. Um, and these are really neat. You can't see it very well here unless maybe I pop it open. You can see maybe in the back of the sleeve, it's got this cute kind of almost like a keyhole uh, tie up detail. I think that's what you call it. Um, and you can kind of see it in this photo here. I think that's a really lovely touch. Um, so th those are your options there. As for the pattern instructions, obviously I got a printed variation, as I've mentioned before. I like to have everything in writing because I like to write all over my instructions, um, especially certain designers where their instructions are kind of fiddly. Um, what I really liked about how they did their instructions is they had, the first half of the guide is sewing view A, and the second half of the guide is sewing view B. And so I really appreciated that so that you don't have to skip from like page 10 to 15 to continue view A or view B. It's just all one chunk for view A of the dress, one chunk for view B. So I like that, as I mentioned before, I've made mistakes before where I'm just in my zone, I'm not paying attention, and I don't realize just going to the next page might not be the step for my dress or my top or whatever I've made. So. I liked these. I will say I thought they made these instructions very easy to follow. Um, I didn't find any part was confusing. I didn't have to go like look for a video online. And I do like the fact that they added the steps of when to finish your seams as, um, you know, sometimes I'll forget to honestly do it. If I'm just like in a flow, I'll forget to do a quick seam finish before I go into the next step. So I just really love when, um, pattern designers include that in their instructions. I know with an intermediate sewer, we should, I guess, technically know when and where to seam or to finish our seams, but I just really always appreciate when they put that in there for me. It's just, it's a good reminder. So I don't have any um, comments or notations about any struggles with their instructions or anything that I think they should have done differently or any typos. I found this was actually pretty easy. Um, oh, I will say, the, the seam allowance was three eighths of an inch. We all know I don't like that. Um, you know, because again, you can't do French seams and things like that. I do not have a baby lock that I can't figure out how to thread properly. I've threaded it, it's still bunching, different topic for a different day. So it won't be as bad once I can actually figure out how to use my serger with a three inch seam allowance, but 
that would be my one grievance for anybody who doesn't have um, a serger. Um, you're going to have to use your pinking shears or a zigzag stitch. Is this really hard to get in that French seam with that small seam allowance? So I would say that would be my only, only kind of complaint. Um, but I'm just coming to terms with the fact that indie patterns often do three eighths of an inch and it does save a little fab fabric. So that's okay. Okay. So as for what I did, so I did, um, view B, I did the tank dress with the button front closure. And as for the size, I did a size two and I did the full bust B right here. So we can see those are the, the initial body measurements, not the finished garment measurements. And my measurements, my bust is 33 inches, my waist is 26 inches, and my hips are 38 inches. This fit perfectly. Um, I would say there was still a little bit of room in the bodice, but not so much room to where it didn't give me the kind of form-fitting silhouette that I wanted. I did taper in the waist. I would say it was about an inch in total at the side seam. So when I actually initially cut out my fabric, um, I went back in and cut the fabric so that I started tapering it in. I would say from about like here to here. And I actually, it was actually at the top. I take that back. So it was like from like right here to down here and I tapered it in. So at about here, um, the total on both sides was an inch. So each side would have been a quarter that I took it in. Yeah. So a quarter inch on each side would be a total of an inch. I might've taken a little bit more in, but hopefully that makes sense. So essentially you can see here it's tapered. It's not just a straight up and down silhouette. Now, granted it wasn't completely straight up and down, but it's tapered in more than it would be as I like to have things that kind of are more of a form fitting at the waist, just because I kind of have a boxy shape up top. So I, I prefer not to have a super square, um, bodice i like to it's taper in a little bit and that was easy to do i honestly just kind of eyeballed it with my ruler almost the same way if you've never done it before it's kind of like the same way when you're doing your dart right where you you follow kind of the angle up to your ending point um you kind of do that same type of of way when you're grading it i'm i'm not explaining how to grade a pattern very well but <laughs> basically i just eyeball it um somewhat methodically. Okay. So there was that. Um, and as for the fabric, so I just used a cheap quilting cotton. It was either from Joanne's or Hobby Lobby as I needed to use it up. It was in my stash and this was intended to be a wearable mock-up as I thought with all these moving parts, um, the last thing I wanted to do was cut up some really nice fabric and have remorse for it. Um, so this is the fabric that I used. I would highly not recommend using a thick quilting cotton for this, especially when it comes to sewing in buttonholes. I find that they fray easily and they get kind of messy if you don't have a good quality quilting cotton, I should say. There are some better qualities out there. Joann's and Hobby Lobby, it's a very like loose weave. Would not recommend it. But I got through the dress. And um, for the lining, I just did a muslin type of fabric. I have a ton on hand that I bought about like five yards years ago. I don't even remember why. Um, so there's a lot of it that I had to use. And then as for the buttons, I truly don't know what I was thinking. I just like got into some zone, even though I used my button holder and I had so many buttons to this dress and it took me forever. I ran out of buttons. I had to go to Hobby Lobby. Why did I do this? I have no idea. It looks weird. Let's be honest, but it's a wearable mock-up, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what I was thinking. And it's such a pain buttoning all these buttons up too. So it just is what it is. These are buttons that I got from um, Hobby Lobby as I really like their button selection. Um, as much as their fabric isn't the best of quality, they have a lot of really cool buttons there. Um, for whatever reason, I think they're actually way better than Joann's, even though Joann's has a better, a bigger selection, but I find Hobby Lobby has cuter ones. Like I just got um, these buttons the other day. And I think these are cute. These almost kind of remind me of like a retro button. And I got these two. They were all on sale and I, I needed some more in these sizes. Um, so anyhow, so that was my weird boo-boo that I made. I, again, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and my buttonholes don't look the best because honestly, I was having an issue with my buttonholer. And I think part of it was the fabric was just so thick because A, it's a thick quilting cotton. Well, I say medium weight quilting cotton. And B, there's fusible interfacing. So when my buttonholer was trying to go over the holes. It was like jamming my machine and things. So I ended up giving up and just doing the actual zigzag stitch and manually doing all these buttonholes, which 
took a minute, we'll just say that. Um, and one thing actually I would mention is when you are sewing this, so you can see it looks like this. these are off center from here, right? So if you look at the placket underneath here where I sold all the buttonholes in, it's all completely in line. There's nothing out of order. But because this bodice is so thick, it just pulls the fabric apart. And it's not because it's stretching on my bodice. It's not like it's too tight. So I found that just something to maybe keep a lookout for when you're sewing your top buttons. Um, just kind of check it as you go after you sew in all of your top buttons. And then when you sew your next button that's actually on the skirt, I would just check it up to make sure it's still lining up as you might need to move the buttons on the skirt slightly over um, towards, let's see. Yeah, you'd want to move the buttons over this way um, so that you could line them up, if that makes sense. So essentially, they may not be completely in line on the placket um, down below when you're sewing them in in order for them to line up here. Because again, they do all line up perfectly, but the fabric, because it's so thick, it's just pulling it. Um, and it, again, it might not be an issue at all with if you're actually using the fabric that the pattern is called for. Again, I just used a cheap wearable mock-up fabric. But all in all, I think it's just such a beautiful dreamy dress um and i think this is a good color i'm still gonna wear this even though i don't like my nine million buttons um i think this is kind of a good fall color because it's a really good warm green to wear i can wear this with like a sweater um and then it's also a good summer sundress and i like this because it's in between it's not dressy but it's not too casual either to where you could get away wearing this to I don't know, like a date night or I wouldn't say a special event, but maybe somewhere if you're wanting to go nicer or you can also wear it super casual with your Birkenstocks, which is what I live in. Um, so yeah, so I I really, really loved this dress. I loved making it. I loved wearing it. Um, I really loved working with the chalk and notch pattern instructions. So I'm definitely going to go back onto their website and see what other patterns they have available as um, definitely adding to the list of one of my favorite indie pattern um, designers and instructions to follow. So um, I'd highly recommend it and I definitely recommend give it a go. I think you'll like it if this is any bit your style at all. Um, here are the fabric requirements just so you all know. Obviously you can look at the website but I think I got lipstick on this but um, just so you know you are going to need a decent amount of yardage. So if you're trying to pull anything from your stash um, you're going to need between three and a quarter to four yards. So not a crazy amount, but, or four and a half yards, I should say. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. Um, thank you for those of you who actually enjoy Vlogmas. I know I've honestly lost some followers since I started Vlogmas. I know maybe I'm just not for everyone and that's okay. Um, and, or maybe some people just want to see sewing. So Anyway, please like and subscribe if you actually enjoy this content. Um, I do appreciate all of you. And if you have any um, comments or anything, feel free to leave them below. I really enjoy connecting with you all, as I've said before. And yeah, I think we'll end it here. I will see you all very soon.